Ghost, a holy God, a mighty God, the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Ha. And holy he is our God. He's an absolutely holy God. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are a holy God. And God, you told us in your word that we shall be holy, for you are holy. God, we thank you that you are a righteous God. And you tell us in your word, God, that the righteous shall live by faith. So God, we come right now by faith, God, asking that you might strengthen us. We come by faith, God, asking that you would forgive us. We come by faith, God, asking for your mercy. God, we come by grace thanking you for the very faith that we have to believe. We come to worship you. Worship you with all that we are. Worship you with our lips. Worship you with our hearts. Worship you with our minds. God, we ask right now that you would speak to us. God, some of us have had some rough weeks. God, we had a rough morning, but yet you allowed us to be in your house one more time. So, holy God, fill us with your power. Fill us with your strength. Make us different today. Now we pray that as the name of Jesus is lifted up, that a soul might be saved, that a heart might be changed. We thank you right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give God a hand and praise. I first heard that song, you sing that song. I've been listening to that song all week. Amen. It has just ministered yes. to my soul. It's reminding us of the God we serve. Yes. See, I'm on this uh, on this kick. And I was sharing it with uh, my Tuesday night Bible study class as we were looking at Romans 12. And Romans 12 tells us, uh, therefore, uh, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship, or as the King, old King James say, uh, T, which is your reasonable service. <laughs> See, a sacrifice of worship of service is your minimum required. Amen. It is, it is your minimum, not, not your maximum. Amen. Sometimes we have like giving God praises, something that we do, and God is like, no, that's your minimum. If He saved you, if He delivered you, if you name the name of Jesus, worship and praise, a sacrifice of praise is your minimum. Amen. You just getting an a, a average a, on your work performance. Amen. That's a, you just getting a standard. Amen. And you just giving God like, just a little praise. Amen. That's your reasonable service. Amen. So don't be afraid to praise God in your way. Amen. I, I love the praise team. I love that, that they come and they use songs to lift us up. But if you woke up this morning, you should already be lifted up.
to Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to work on our minimums today. Amen? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. We're still, still in Ephesians chapter 2. Again, praise God for your presence. Amen. Some of my good friends out there, praise the Lord for you. Good to see you. Amen. God is faithful. Ephesians chapter 2. Focus your attention on uh, verse 19. Verse 19. Amen. Thank you. And this is what the Word of God says. So then, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. The whole building is being fitted together in him. It is growing into a holy sanctuary in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for God's dwelling in the Spirit. Mm. Listen, God, the master builder, is building his church in and through his people. We are living stones. We are now God's temple. And if you need a title for today, it's simply... Uh, Again, from our series on Ephesians, the blueprint, the master builder's plan for his church. The master builder's plan for his church. Listen, I, I, I love the little Lego movie. Amen. When, when I was growing up and I was young, uh, you know, we really couldn't afford Legos. I, I don't think they sold Legos to the folk from Compton. Amen? I probably had some builder blocks or something. I don't even know. I didn't get Legos. But, but, but I loved the, the, when the Lego movie came out, my, my son was all excited. And, and you know, I'm going to take my boy. We, we don't take our boy to go see the Lego movie. If you went and saw it, you know that it was just as much stuff for the adults as it was for the kids. Uh, but in the Lego movie, they have this concept, and it, it, it's a concept that comes from those Lego builders. We got some undercover Lego builders here. <laughs> hey, Amen. Um, and that concept is the master builders. See, the master builders are, are those that don't need instructions. They're able to build just out of their creativity. Right, right. Amen. I, I built some Legos with my boy. And, and, and sometimes, you know, I just want to start grabbing pieces. But I realized it was some instructions. So if I wanted to look like that it looks like on the book, then I need to follow the instructions that are there. But in Lego land, there's some folk that don't need instructions. They can build from their own creativity. Amen? Listen, our God is a master builder. See, the instruction book is not for him. The instruction book is for us. See, he built this and all this out of his own creativity, out of his sovereign will. He is the master builder and he's given us instructions for life. See, God is that true master builder. He is the one who created us and he has given us a book, an instruction book for life, the word of God. And as we've learned thus far in our sermon series here in Ephesians, the blueprint, God has a plan and he is working his plan. And so last week we learned that he has a plan for rescue. Amen. Some of us didn't know we were drowning. Some of us didn't know that we were in trouble. Amen. But God has unleashed a plan to rescue us. To rescue us from the hole that sin had on our lives. To rescue us from the, the destiny that sin leads to. He sent his son to rescue us through redemption. Amen. And we found out on last week that he rescued us not because we were so wonderful. Not because he needed us on his team. Not because he would not be complete without us. He rescued us by his grace. It was by his grace that we were saved. And our only response to that gift of grace is to accept it by faith. Amen. We learned that on last week. So this week we turn to the master builder's plan for his church. A plan for his spirit to dwell in his people. See, this plan is a plan that unifies the body of Christ, his church, and helps us to understand that the Holy Spirit doesn't dwell in buildings anymore. 
He dwells in us. Let me give you a little context as we uh, uh, jump into this. Listen, the first 10 verses of Ephesians 2, Paul kind of deals with the fact that salvation of sinners is something that is by grace alone. It's by grace alone. He lays out the fact that we learned on last week that, that listen, we were towed up. Right. Amen. We were depraved. I know all of us, some of us here, you know, before you came to Christ, you thought you were good. Right. Thought everything was wonderful. But Ephesians chapter 2 paints a totally different picture. Amen. We came here as God's enemy, far off from him. Amen. But it was through his son that he brought us back. Then we see here in the, in the immediate context of our verse uh, that we're going to be looking at, the verses we're going to concentrate on, is that we were separated mm -hmm. from God. Yes. We had an issue. See, when we were born, we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and that caused a separation between us and God. But not only that, we'll learn here, as it teaches in the Old Testament, that God's chosen people, Israel, he chose them to be distinct from everything else and from everyone else. The Old Testament shows us that his chosen people, by, by his laws, by his regulations, he set in place that they might be different than all those that were around them. He put dietary conditions on them that they would eat food like they ate. Amen. He put restrictions on, on marriage and, and relationships. Amen. So that he could protect his people. And some of us, when, when we read the Old Testament, we're confused. We think that God is biased. No, God had a plan. Right. And he was working good, his good, plan. Good. And we see here in Ephesians 2 that God starts to show us that his plan is coming to fruition. He had a plan, and that plan was to unify people through Christ. Listen, the one word that we see all throughout chapter 2 that describes our condition, those of us who weren't born Jews, those of us that were, were Gentiles, those of us that weren't part of the chosen people, that one, time, one word shows us that we were outside. Amen. You, you know what it, what it feels like to be an outsider. Yeah. Amen. Some of us in our families, we're outsiders. Amen. And, and sometimes the outsider, it's not because you're the black sheep. Right, right, right. It's not always that. You, you might be that way because you look different. Right. You know, you might be the outsider because folks are a little jealous. Amen. But, but what we see all throughout uh, a scripture in the Old Testament that the Gentiles were seen as those that were outside. Right. So before we came to Christ, we were on the outside. That's it. That's Amen? It. Why were we on the outside? Because we were without Christ. See, the Ephesians worshipped the goddess Diana, and before the coming of the gospel, knew nothing about Christ. Those who were acceptable to God as Christians by, were by faith, and they had a problem, and Paul wanted to tell them the problem in Ephesus is that you were without Christ. And in a Christ-like state, you, it is a definite tragedy. Paul laid out to them, this Gentile uh, nation, that they needed to be in Christ. Because outside of Christ, you can't claim the promise from Romans 8.1. It says, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. See, outside of Christ, as we've learned before, we're walking dead. We are already dead spiritually outside of Christ. So they were outside Christ. They were without Christ. Not only that, they, they were without citizenship. God called the Jews and built them into a nation. He gave them his laws and his blessings. Amen. A Gentile could enter the nation as a proselyte or, or what they call a recruit. Amen. But he was not born into the family. You know how folks treat you if you're not born into the family? Right, 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 right. They treat you a little different. Amen. Mama may love you just like your family. Daddy may love you. Just like your family, but sometimes the kids are quick to remind you when trouble comes. Yeah. And you know you ain't really blood. Right. <laughs> you, you know you ain't, you ain't really blood. Huh? You, you, you know I'm in, you not. Amen? They're <laughs> quick to remind you. Listen, the Jews took to heart God, the fact that God had chosen them. See, they went a little too far with it. They start to, because they were chosen, they looked down their nose at folks. Right. Right. If you don't belong, here. It would be times that, that a common prayer
prayer in the temple would be, God, thank you that I'm a Jew and not like them. Amen. They, they, they had this self-righteousness. They didn't understand that God had chosen them not because they were so wonderful, not because they were so good. He had chosen them by his sovereign will to be a blessing to those that were outside of the nation. Listen, without Christ, we don't have to come and understand it. In Ephesians chapter 2, it teaches us that we were without God. Listen, the heathen had gods of plenty, as Paul discovered in Athens when he preached in, in Acts 17, telling the folks at Athens who had all these philosophies. Uh, the, the, the word in, in the ancient history says that sometimes there were more gods than men. Right, right, right. You know, you just made up your God. Some, something like what folk do today. Right, yeah, yeah. Amen. The, the God of your own understanding. Well, your understanding is folks. But it's on your God, it's going to be faulty, amen? Listen, it is worth noting that, that the plight of us that were outside of Christ, the Gentiles, was caused not by God, but by our own willful sin. We were outside of Christ. We are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We were walking without God on purpose. Mm, I know we're kind of quiet with that one, Amen. Listen, uh, uh, Romans 1 tells us that it was not by accident that that creation did not worship uh, the creator. Amen. It tells us that, that the creation started to worship that thing that was created. Men have an evil tendency. And we want to worship what we can understand. We want to worship what we can control. Amen. That's why we put so many uh, uh, standards and rules on the church. We talk about the church giving us rules. We put so many. If the service at this time, then I can't make it. If they do choir rehearsal then, I can't get with it. If they got Bible study here, no, no. They have to, everything has to fit into what we want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all praying this morning. Uh, listen, it is a sad story of man knowing the truth about God and deliberately turning away from it. It is the story of devolution, not evolution. We are devolving away from the one who created us in his likeness and image, the one who said, All I want to do is love you. Mm, amen. Listen, when we look at this, Ephesians 2, we find out we were in two different positions. See, in our old position, we were without Christ. In our new position, we are in Christ. We are a holy nation. Without Christ, we were aliens and strangers, but in Christ, we are no longer strangers. Outside of Christ, we had no hope, but in Christ, we are called in hope. See, without God, we were without God in our old position, in our new position, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is ours. So let's look at this plan. See, God's plan is that his church, his church honor him and glorify him. But the one thing that he wants is that his church is one. Amen. This church is one. Amen. I know that you know in the hood you're here for a one love. Well, what that mean? Amen. Are you singing a who did it song? What? What, what, what's that mean? Uh, one love. Oh, y'all don't know who did it? All right. All right. All right. I got to work with you a little bit. Amen. He, he, he wants us to have one love. Listen, through, through all this, he's calling us from verses 11 through 19 for unity in the church. Listen to what the scripture says. He says this. So then remember that the one at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision by those called the circumcised, done by hand in the flesh. At that time you were without a Messiah, excluded from the citizenship of Israel, and foreigners to the covenants and the promises with no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ, you who are far away have been brought near by the blood of the Messiah. For he is our peace, who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility. Understand that there was, even in the old temple, mm -hmm. there was a dividing wall. Yes. It was a place where the Gentiles could not come any further. 
As a matter of fact, they understood that they came past that dividing wall. They came any further in the temple, it was under the penalty of death. Right, right, right. See, it was a dividing wall. And, and here it is in Christ, that dividing wall has done away by his blood. Yeah. It was his blood shed on the cross that divided that wall of hostility between Jew and Gentile and made us one. Says he did it in his flesh. He did away with the law of the commandments and regulations so that he might create in himself one new man from two, resulting in peace. That's right here in his word, verse 15. Verse 16 says this, he did this so that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross and put the hostility to death by it. You know, reconcile means to, to restore what's been broken. Mm -hmm. Listen, our, our relationship was broken through sin. It, way back in the garden, amen, when sin entered in, it severed our relationship. And it was through Christ that he brought us back to the Father. The scripture tells us that Jesus died for sin once and for all, the just for the unjust in order to bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. It was Christ who brought us together through his blood. Listen, when Christ came, verse 17, he proclaimed the good news of peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. Then our scripture text tells us, verse 19, I mean, verse uh. That's yeah, sorry, verse 18 says this, For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. So here it is. You want an access card? I like VIP. I don't get the chance to experience it much. Yeah. Right. You know, some of y'all do. I, I love VIP because what VIP does is you get that all access pass. Amen? Yeah. See, in the Old Testament, everybody would have all access. It was only the, the high priest that was able to go into the Holy of Holies once a year on behalf of all the people, amen? And, and he had to carry that and make a sacrifice for the folk. Uh, but when Jesus came, when Jesus gave his life on the cross, the Bible says that the veil was ripped. There was a veil, a curtain between the, that he the Holy of Holies. And when the veil was torn, and all believers, he took and put a VIP pass on. You got all access. Listen, I know I, I'm your pastor, but you don't need me to get to Jesus. Amen. Uh, you don't need a priest to get to Jesus. Amen. You don't need anybody. You can go to him for yourself. Amen. You can talk to him for yourself. You need some deliverance? Talk to Jesus. You need some healing? Talk to Jesus. You need to be restored? Talk to Jesus. You can go to him yourself. Amen? Listen, don't get it twisted. I can stand in the gap for you, but you got your own VIP pass. Amen? Don't limit your access. Some of us, you know, the enemy has put some, some bodyguards outside the door and, and, and some bouncers outside the door. Your breakthrough's on the other side. And the, and the bouncer's telling you, you can't get in. You're like, hey, I'm VIP. Yeah. <laughs> I got all access to my father. Amen? That's what Jesus did for us. See, God's plan is that his church is one, one nation and one family. Verse 19 tells us, so then you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizenships, citizens with the saints and members of God's household. See, now we were once foreigners, aliens, amen, estranged from God. But through Christ, we got new citizenship. You got some new papers, amen. You are a citizen of heaven. You are a citizen of God, of God's nation. He tells us because we're citizens, now we are ambassadors for Christ. That means wherever we go, we represent him. See, it's good to be a citizen. Oh, but it's better to even be a family member. He tells us right here again in Scripture, now you're members of God's household. Amen. That even goes beyond BRP. Right. Amen. You're members of God's household. The scripture says that we can call him Abba Father. That means Amen. we can call him Amen. Daddy. Amen. Because 
We family, amen. I can call Cynthia my sister because we family, amen. I can call Ed my brother because we, we, we family. Hey, hey, Felicia, we, we family, amen. We're family members. So we were once estranged, but through Christ, we are now family. That's his desire to make us one family. Through faith in Christ, we enter into God's family, and God becomes our father. This is a wonderful family of God, which is found only in him. And this family just don't stop when we leave here. Amen? Because we get to go to the great family reunion. I know some folk around here love family reunion. Amen? You know, when you think about family reunion, that good feeling comes up. Amen? We're going to see some folk we haven't seen in a long time. We're going to eat some barbecue. We're going to yeah. see a deal. We're going to see all the folk. Amen? And, you know, we're going to go to our own town. Some of us can't wait to the family reunion so we can show everybody what we've done. Some of us are a little nervous about going so they can see what we've been doing. Amen? But, but check this out. Uh, we, we're family here, but it's going to be a great family reunion in heaven. Amen. When we get to see mama here, we get to see daddy, we get to see uncle, we get to see brother and sister. Yeah, we miss them here, but it's a family reunion yeah. that's coming for those that are in Christ because we family. Yeah. Amen. And our family just don't stop when we leave here. Amen. This is an eternal family yeah. built by God. Hallelujah. But not only that, this is this is what uh, the crust of what crust of what I want to get to. This is the good stuff. Amen. He not only calls us to be one family, but he calls us to be one temple. Mm. Listen, in the Old Testament, uh, the temple was a place that they went to. The Old Testament tells us that it was God who His Spirit filled the temple. Amen. It was a, a Jew's obligation to go to the temple at least once a year to offer sacrifices. We see through Isaiah, the Bible tells us that his spirit filled the temple. After they built the temple of God, the Bible says that the Jews, they prayed, amen, and God's spirit Feel the temple, amen. Before they built the, the physical temple, the building, when uh, Israel had come out of Egypt, they built a tabernacle, which is the which was a, a mobile place. And the Bible says that God filled his spirit, filled that tabernacle. But let me tell you, God doesn't fill up buildings no more. God, God is God's spirit doesn't. Feel, you know, I, I love it when we, we, we come into place and, and we welcome God's spirit in the place. Amen. amen. We call this uh, the sanctuary. Amen. But but the Bible says God doesn't dwell in buildings right. anymore. Amen. You don't hear the song, I, I raise my hand in the, in the sanctuary. Uh, no, the more proper song is I am a living sanctuary. God prepared me right, to be a sanctuary. Right. Right. Pure and holy. Tried and true. Amen. He doesn't dwell in buildings anymore. You, you don't believe me? Let's look at what the scripture says. Listen, not only is God's plan for his church to, to be one, his plan is that the, his spirit dwells in his church, his people, not a building. Listen to what the scripture says in verse 20. It says, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ himself as the cornerstone. The whole building being put together by him grows into a holy sanctuary in the Lord. You also are being built together. God's dwelling in the Spirit. Yes. Well, see, see here in verse 20, Paul switches metaphors. Mm -hmm. See, but before he was talking about the oneness that we have in Christ. In 19, he tells us about our citizenship and that we were strangers and are far off. But now he switches metaphors. He switches Pictures. He uses the metaphor of a building and declares that both Jews and Gentiles are stones. He says these stones built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Amen. The apostles and the prophets that laid out the fact that Jesus is God. The prophets proclaimed his coming. The apostles preached that he has come and that he has lived and that he has died, that he has risen again. And now that those who are lost need to receive him. It is foundational. That you understand that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. 
Not only that, it is also, this foundation also rests on the fact that the word of God speaks of who he is. Listen, when we talk about this fact that it is foundational, he says on, on this building that was built on the prophets and on, on the apostles, he says that Jesus is the cornerstone. You know, my, my, my brother Layton, uh, wherever he is, amen, he, oh, there you go, amen, he is a, a contractor. And, and you have to know that when you build, one of the, the most important things that you lay is that cornerstone. Because everything is built off of that. Amen. If you got a weak cornerstone, you will have a weak building that will crumble. See, some of us, the, the chief cornerstone in our lives is our own personal experience. And then we wonder when things shift and change, amen, that our life starts to crumble. Some of us, we put our, our cornerstone in people, amen, but we know that, that people got a breaking point. <laughs> hey, 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 amen. Uh, people will break, amen. Some of us, our chief cornerstones are our job, amen, and, and we know that uh, jobs come and jobs go. Amen. I remember when I, I first got my first, my, my good county job, amen, and I spent 16 and a half years doing that. And my, my pops, who had two 20-year careers, amen, told me, you know, son, they don't do jobs like they used to. Oh, you know, you, you used to get a job down at the factory or at the place, and, and you worked your whole career. And don't, don't, don't depend on that one thing. Right. Right. See, some of us are depending on things that can't keep us, that can't sustain us. That stuff you can't build upon, amen? The Bible says it is Jesus who is the chief cornerstone. He is the cornerstone and we can build our lives on him. Listen, verse 21 tells us the whole building is being fitted together in him and is growing into a holy sanctuary in the Lord. It is Jesus that we must build our life on. Listen to what the scripture says in Isaiah 28, 16. It says, therefore, the Lord God said, look, I have laid a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. The one who believes will be unshakable. Man, we live in California. This earthquake country. Amen. Some of us, we've been through some shakers. Amen. I've I, I been on the street when an earthquake hit and I was riding the wave. I, I've seen telephone poles wave at you. Amen. Right, right. We, we know what it is to be shook up. And some of us in our faith, because we have not had Jesus as our chief cornerstone, have had our faith shook up. We've had our lives shook up. And he says that if you make Jesus your chief cornerstone, if you build your life on him, you'll be unshakable. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. No matter, look, the, 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 the strains of life may come, the earthquakes of life may come, you may sway, but you won't be broken. Amen. Yeah. If you want a life that's unshakable, then let Jesus be the chief cornerstone yeah. of your life. Listen, the psalmist says in 118.22, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Yeah. Don't reject the stone. Don't reject, don't, don't reject that one thing, that, the one that will keep your building whole. Amen? Listen, the stones are forming a living spiritual temple. To glorify the Lord. Again, in the Old Testament, the presence and glory of God inhabited a literal stone building. Now, God dwells not in a stone building, but in the hearts of believers. Amen. Christ is the unifying factor that takes the separate stones and creates a temple. He is building a beautiful temple, not made with hands, but made through Christ Jesus. And this temple is a holy place yeah. set apart for God. Do you know that God is building something great in you? See, in this temple, God receives worship and praise. Uh, like the song says, this worship belongs to you. Amen. This praise amen. belongs to you. Amen. And amen. I, I, I'm your temple, God. I'm giving you what belongs to you. Amen. Nothing else in your life deserves worship. That's right. That's right. See, because worship is a lifestyle. Uh, I, I, I hate to break it to you. Worship don't don't start at nine thirty on Sunday morning. Oh, <laughs> worship don't start when the praise team start clapping their hands. Right, right, right. Worship starts when you go. 
I got another day. Amen. That's when worship starts. Amen. Recognizing that, that God, you are worthy because you grace me with another day. You grace me with another day of life. You grace me with the ability to draw breath. His worship belongs to you. In verse 22, check out with, with verse 22 says here in the scripture, he says, in whom you also are being built together for God's dwelling in the spirit. See, God, Paul uses this to conclude with a pointed reminder to the Gentile Ephesians that had no room or reason for self-pity. See, God included them, and since God included them, he included us. See, God is the one who brought us together in Christ. In Christ, we are being built into God's temple along with the Jews. Amen. All together, they form, we form one worship center. See, the worship center ain't a building. I remember when we uh, did our church lunch in August, and I think I've shared this before, we gathered in a, in a circle outside in the parking lot, and I reminded them that, yeah, we got a church building, but this ain't the church. We are the church. You can knock down every building that got a cross on it. Amen. You can knock down every structure that calls itself a temple, a sanctuary, a worship center. Amen. But the worship center is us. Right. Amen. It's in us. This, this worship that we have, it belongs to God and it's not inhabited in a building. It's inhabited in his people. Amen. Listen, you are a stone in God's house built by the master builder. Amen. But check out what Jesus said. Because some stones act like they don't want to be part of the building. <laughs> Luke 19 says this. So those who were sent left and found it just as had he had told them. This is Jesus. As they were you uh, untying this young donkey, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the donkey? He said, the Lord has need of it. They said, then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their robes on the donkey, they helped Jesus get on it. As he was going along, they were spreading their robes on the road. He said, and he said, now he came near the path down the Mount of Olives, and the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice. All the miracles they had seen. The king who comes in the name of the Lord is the blessed one. Peace in heaven. Glory in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd told him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered them, I tell you, if they were to keep silent, the stones would cry out. Mm. Hmm. Are you a stone that he got to make cry out? Yeah. Or do you understand that you are a living stone yeah. that he is forming into his temple, his sanctuary? Listen to this. It says, shortly before his death, Timothy Richards, a missionary statesman to China, told of this experience he was uh, in, he had in Shaitong visiting with a Chinese philanthropist who voiced unashamedly that he had read the New Testament through three times. It says, whereupon Richard asked that where his impressions and what ideas were generated. Reflectively, he replied, I think that the most marvelous thing that impressed me was this, that it is possible for us men to become temples of the Holy Ghost. It is remarkable that the God of the universe, the one who slung the stars, the one, the one who was there before the beginning, the one that is beyond time, has his spirit dwelling in us. Listen, when we look at the scripture, 1 Corinthians 3.16 tells us, don't you yourselves know that you are God's sanctuary and that the spirit of God lives in you? 1 Peter 2, 4, and 6 says, Listen, you are coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. 
He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. And you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. Listen, God is the master builder. And he said that his spirit no longer dwells in buildings. His spirit dwells in you. That's right. What are you doing with the building he's putting up? Right, 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 right. How are you living your life? Does your life exemplify that you have the spirit of the living God in right, you? Right. Does your life show that God himself resides within you? Jesus said, listen, that, that he is the chief course. So Jesus told, told the Pharisees this, listen, you can destroy this body. Yeah. Yeah. But in three days, I'm going to raise it up. Amen. Amen. Listen, they, those of us that are believers, we may have all these things around us that can be destroyed. Listen, families get broke up. Uh, listen, we lose homes. We lose possessions. Amen. But if you are a believer, you will never lose the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is taking up permanent residency with you. So what does your schedule in the Holy Spirit schedule look like? On the daily. Where are you taking God to on a regular basis? Amen. Are you spending time feeding your spirit are you spending time bringing glory to the God that dwells in you? Listen, some of us, we struggle, yeah. right, to live this Christian life. But the Bible says that we have everything in us for godliness and righteousness. You know why? Because you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. Let me tell you this as I close. Don't listen to the bouncers at the end. You got VIP access. You have great power dwelling in you. Many of us are living beneath our power. We're living beneath the, the things that God has. We're like, God, where is my breakthrough? When are you coming through? He said, well, your breakthrough is, is right there within you. <laughs> and you just got to trust me. But well, well, God, when, when, is, when is this going to happen? And when is that is going to happen? He, he's like, you just wait on me. I've been trying to tell you. But you won't listen to me. See, because you're too busy listening to other stuff. You, you're too busy listening to what this person says or what that person says, what the world says. Listen, I told you you're fearfully and wonderfully made. I told you you're a holy nation. I told you you're a royal priesthood. You're walking around defeated, but I told you that you are more than a conqueror. Amen? You, you're walking around beat up, but I told you you are victorious in me. What are you doing with the Holy Spirit? God says that you are living stone. And he's building his building. The master builder is building his building, building his temple in you. So will you ask God this morning to prepare you to be that sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true? Tried means you can test it. A fool will put a cornerstone in his building that ain't never been tested. Amen. Because if you ain't tested, it may look like it may look good. The brick may look good, but you put it there and it crumbles because you didn't test it. See, we've been tried and tested. You give your life to Christ. Let him be that living sanctuary in your life. What are you doing with the Holy Spirit? The master builder has built you up to bring him honor and to bring him glory. You don't have to go to a building to do it. All you have to do is worship him, give him praise, be obedient to his word. Amen. That is your minimum standard of worship. Amen. Give God a hand of praise.